Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in CSS and today we're going to be discussing when to use classes and when to use IDs. So as you can see from the last tutorial it's been a while since, since I've done CSS so please excuse me if I kind of forget some stuff. Uh, I've been doing a whole bunch of other languages since I've done CSS. Oh my goodness. But anyways, so yeah, a, a JavaScript book that I just bought and a whole bunch of others that I'm going to be doing over the summer uh, I finally answered a long question that I wanted answered because my original textbook that I had for the CSS class that I had didn't even answer this. Uh, and that's when to use classes and when to use IDs. Uh, so, as you might have remembered, and also no note that I have a link tag here, and it's going to include my default.css, which is right here. It's blank, and it's in the same folder. Uh, so, But if you just came up with my tutorials, you're probably used to this. I'm not really used to this right now. But remember, we could add a class. And let's call it sample, and then down here, I'll throw in a class, and I call it sample. And if I went in here, I could type out dot sample, and make the color blue. So if I go, click save, and I refresh the page, now they're both blue, so that worked out. And uh, yeah, you can also specify the tag. So if I just wanted the paragraph tag to be blue, if I refresh the page, only the paragraph tag is blue. Now, as, as you might have remembered a couple tutorials ago, uh, I talked to you about how you could do this with classes uh, and how it's really convenient, but you can't do with IDs. And that's kind of the answer right there, when to use classes and when to use IDs. But I will get into deeper detail that you might not know about yet, but I'm still going to go into deeper detail. Uh, so I could add an ID right here. So I'm going to go ID and I can call it 1, and uh, I'll just leave it as is. And I'll throw a pound sign here, followed by 1, and let's change it to green. So I click Save All, and I refresh the page. Now the text is green. Uh, but, you know, how does that tell you when to use classes and when to use IDs? Couldn't I just add an ID to the H1 tag, and that will turn green as well? It will but you need to think about IDs as like an actual like like a pin number a personal identification number uh, they're supposed to be unique to every tag on a single page no nowhere else on this entire web page should any other element it doesn't matter if it's a p tag it doesn't matter if it's an h1 tag no others should have this one here so this h1 tag cannot be an ID of one you can do that but that's it's not just bad programming practice you're not even supposed to do that that's what classes are meant for classes are meant for uh, many different tags in the same web page can have that same be in the same class thus it can be styled the same way but IDs are different and the biggest reason for this is in JavaScript and that's why my book was talking about this if you don't know about JavaScript uh, don't worry I still don't I still do want you to know why so let me let me make a comment here. I can't believe I can remember how to make comments. Whoops, maybe I don't. There we go. Uh, there is a function. So if you're not into programming, uh, you don't really have to understand what a function is. But I'll explain it for you. Is there's a function called get element by id, and I've used this a lot in my JavaScript tutorials. Uh, there's no get element by class. There's there's nothing like that. And what this does is it basically gets the value, or it can get many other things, of of whatever tag we're discussing. So if I went get element by id, and I put some quotes in there, and I put one inside. Uh, let's say I created a variable. So I created a variable. Let's say I created a variable up here, and I called it my variable. And later. I will go my variable and then dot get element by ID and I'll look for the ID of one. It's going to look for only one instance of this one. If there's more ones in here, there's going to be big trouble. Quite honestly, I don't know what will happen, but I know you're not supposed to do that. Uh, so this, this is why you only have one ID on that one page. Uh, quite frankly, no other pages should have it either in case they share the same JavaScript file because down the road I will be teaching you about unobtrusive JavaScript and that's in the JavaScript level 2 playlist when I do it and that will teach you never or as, as minimal as you can don't put any JavaScript inside this page 
put JavaScript in separate files. Uh, that's unobtrusive JavaScript right there, but uh, that's another, that's a whole other thing. But basically, that's the difference. Just one ID with of, the, of this name, of this name right here, anywhere. And it's because of this. And what does get element by ID do? Why would, what would you use this? One big, big example of why you would use get element by ID is so you can modify the value. And maybe you want to set it equal to something else. So what if this ID of one says hello, and I want to change it to, you know, goodbye? I could do it this way. I could set the value of this one equal to goodbye. So that's something I could do. I could change the text. I could make it so if you hover over text, it'll change. But I would still need JavaScript. Uh, there's a bunch of different things that you uh, that could be used in order to determine this. And that's why I really want you to understand is that classes they're fine. Uh, all elements under the same class will have that same style but IDs are different usually you won't even style something with the same ID uh, it, it, maybe it'll just give you the ID so you could manipulate it later with JavaScript or something else so that's about it for this tutorial I didn't I couldn't really show you anything because I, I have to assume you don't know JavaScript uh, so this is something that I will actually go through more in detail in my JavaScript near the end of my level 1 playlist when I'm doing like DHTML in the document object model and a lot in my level 2 playlist when I go really deep in the document object model because that's where this becomes very important so uh, I'm just gonna leave it here and well that's about all I wanted to do so you just you know so you, you do something like this when you're messing with the document object model you would do something like this and yeah, so, yeah, that's about all I wanted to show you. So, this is my first CSS tutorial that I'm doing in a while, and there's a few more to come. Uh, some little more advanced stuff that I would like to show you. So, I'll see you next time.